Good morning, friends of St. Paul's. Today is Wednesday, July 15th, and this week for our Wednesday devotion, we'll be reading the upcoming first reading for this Sunday, July 19th. That is Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Hear the word of God. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, this week I wanted to spend a little bit of time with this reading because I think it touches on something that's a really important part of our life of faith, and that is trust in a trustworthy God. When I used to teach confirmation with a classroom full of students in my first call, when we got to this part of the catechism, we would talk about idolatry. When we learned about the Ten Commandments, I would ask them to look through their Instagram feed or look at whatever their preferred platform of social media was and notice some of the things that caused a person to become uh, Insta-famous, to have lots of followers and people who really were interested in what they were about. And some of the things that we came up with um, that seemed to get people a lot of fame and a lot of um, praise and maybe worship from fans, causing these things to become idols that we all sought in order to be successful or blessed. They were often things that related to maybe your wealth, your appearance, um, things like a six pack or really beautifully shot photos or a really expensive bag or um, clothing item in your post, whatever the case may be, there were these things, these idols that people um, spend more time thinking about and striving toward rather than the gifts of the kingdom of God. And I think idolatry can be a hard thing to talk about because we can say, well, I don't worship any other gods. I don't even know any other gods that I could worship. Many Christians in the United States might say something like that. You know, well, I worship God. But what else do we worship in our daily life? Maybe we seek uh, money, security, and that's not a bad thing, right? We need those things to live, but when they become the measuring stick by which we make all of our decisions, that, that need for financial security, even if you're not trying to be wealthy, but when that is the main thing that helps you understand your worth and your worthiness, maybe that has become an idol. For me, I know in these strange and challenging times, we have so much partisan infighting and all of these um, challenging conversations that are happening and the way that people are reacting at one another. I seek control as an idol. So in my own life, maybe that means that I place a lot of um, importance on doing things that I know are within my power to control and that I place a lot of stock in those as the things by which my day has meaning. So maybe an idol for me, rather than being able to rest, to be still and know that God is God and I am not, uh, maybe I seek to get my whole to-do list done so that I can prove that I am a worthwhile person and that I am a worthwhile pastor in this time when we are not meeting together in person. That could be an idol for me. Whatever it may be for you, you know your own life better than I do, and Jesus can reveal these things to us um, in all manner of ways to notice the ways that we are worshiping something other than God, who Paul Tillich would call the ground of our being. I want today to remind you that God is God and you are not, and that is good news, my friends. Whatever it is that we strive for in our life, wherever it is that we place our trust and our hope, whether that be in political leaders or our bank account or relationships or even our own ideology, I hope that this day you might be freed to just relax into the grace of God, who is God, who is the center of our life, 
and from whom all good things flow. Now, this is not to say that you have to spend all of your time actively focusing on God, 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 because that kind of mind control work can also turn into an idol that teaches you something that's wrong with you rather than opening you to the gracious identity that you have as a beloved child of God. So today I simply want to remind you, church, that you are good, that you are beloved, and that God is the center of our being. And that in this text from Isaiah, we hear, do not fear or be afraid. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. God is trustworthy and God's faithfulness to us is true throughout all times of life, especially in times of great uncertainty, when we might seek things to cling to in order to feel that center of control, that not everything has been lost in this time. I pray that God's spirit might turn us and remind us that God is that centering space, that God is the rock that we need not fear, because although it may seem that everything is out of whack or confusing, although it may seem that we feel nothing but anger or sadness most days in this time, that God is with us and that God is bigger than all of the things that govern our life, the things that we worship inadvertently or on purpose. Today, may we be reminded that our God, our creator, loves us and thinks we are good, and that our God is continually coming near to us and loosening our grip on those things which help us to feel secure so that we might rest in the gracious presence of our Creator. God be with you this day. Amen.